Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. Following me and sharing my videos is very important. I'm a one-man shop with absolutely no money for advertising or much of anything else. So social media is the way that I grow. So please follow me on Twitter at SYLTales and any other social media. You can find links to them on the About page on this channel. I would appreciate your support via a page on my website, SYLTales.TV, and there is a link to the donation page in my description box. This video took a couple of odd twists before it got finalized. Now, I originally planned to chat with you about why people seem to really hate the final uh, season two episode of Doctor Who. And that's because my review of the show's second season finale with Jodie Whittaker, The Timeless Children, it was rather glowing. And you can see there's a link to that in my description box below if you'd like to watch that video. I quickly discovered that I'm in the extreme minority in liking this episode. In fact, there seems to be a lot of outrage over it. Now, I didn't understand this, so I asked the members of a science fiction group on Facebook why it was that they disliked the episode so much. Now, the replies I got back tend to be along the same lines. Doctor Who, like all of our favorite franchises of late, has started pushing a brand of woke politics that's irritating at best and enraging at worst. Well, I entirely agree that this is true. In fact, it's been my major criticism of almost all of my Chibnall era episodes. I'm absolutely certain it's why the ratings have taken a complete nosedive under Chibnall. They're now so low that they approach the level of, that Sylvester McCoy's Seventh Doctor reached, and that led to the cancellation of the show in 1989. But I don't see anything particularly woke about the Timeless Children. Hence, my asking people for reasons that they disliked it. The general answers I was getting didn't answer in my specific question about the Timeless Children, while the overwhelming majority just fell back on the woke politics reason. I also had several people say, if you can't see it, then there's no hope for you. However, the thing that really intrigued me was the number of people who sent me links of popular YouTubers' videos in which those YouTubers emotionally just excoriated the episode. And that is when the subject of this video changed. In the introduction of my reviews, I'm careful to say that I do not do outrage reviews. You see, there's a lot of reviewers on YouTube and elsewhere who are simply actors. They have no real emotional attachment to their reviews. However, they portray outrage in fact, a massive amount of outrage, because they learned after The Last Jedi that outrage sells. They hate everything as a knee-jerk reflex, because their viewers want to see them hate things. Now, viewers watch to the tune of hundreds of thousands of views and subscribers, and this in turn translates into money for the reviewers. Now, I entirely understand wanting money. If I found a way to grow my audience to the point where I received a single penny, I would be thrilled. However, success is unlikely precisely because I don't do outrage videos. In my reviews, I will give you a thoughtful, rational review. If I like something, I will tell you why in detail. If I dislike something, I will tell you why in detail. But you will rarely, if ever, see me get angry or outraged because I am the adult in the room. Unfortunately, viewers don't want to see reasonable, thoughtful reviews. They want to see people who are outraged to the point of hulking out. Now, this causes a weird feedback loop between fans and popular reviewers. A viewer might like something, dislike something, maybe even just be ambivalent about it. But they click to a rage review where the reviewer just hulks out about how just how terrible it was. And so viewers, no matter what they actually thought going in, walk in outraged at how terrible it was. Having liked this video once, the viewers go back for more outrage. The outrage YouTubers portray more outrage. The viewer becomes more outraged, and this goes on and on and on ad infinitum. And the result is that no matter how good something may be, fans come away hating it. Ultimately, no one can enjoy anything, even if it's good. And this makes outrage YouTubers dangerously toxic to fandom. Indeed, they are absolutely ruining fandom. Now, how do you tell who is an outrage YouTuber? Well, 
just off the bat, I can say it includes Doomcock and at least half of the fandom menace. They scream and they throw tantrums and throw out predictions that turn out to be wrong with wild abandon, and somehow nobody knows this. Any YouTuber who does nothing but rage videos is just an actor. And if you want a more comprehensive list than just Doomcock and half the fandom menace, well, fine. Oh, leave me, leave me a, a, a comment in the description box I'll, uh, and below. I will. I'll go make a video that actually lists them all in excruciating detail and why they're nothing but outrage viewers. Now fans themselves love getting outraged and there's a pretty simple reason for this. They're watching all, all of our favorite franchises ejecting good storytelling and substituting it for annoying woke politics that generally insults the viewer. Star Trek, Star Wars, Doctor Who, Marvel and DC, both in comics and films, have been utterly ruined by woke politics. These are franchises that we used to love, even with the occasional warts. In general, they were a lot of fun escapism. They might as well, they might have made some social commentary, but it was pretty subtle. Today, they tend to be directly and obviously insulting to males. White males particularly, straight white males extremely particularly, and white people just in general. Now let me be clear. Having gay characters, female characters, characters of color, that's fine. No one objects to that. They object to insulting everyone else in order to make those characters appear superior. So the question then becomes, why are showrunners and producers doing this, particularly when, as is obviously the case in Doctor Who, the ratings and profits go straight into the toilet? The answer is that they think their belief system is superior to that of the people that they are insulting. They're further driven by the fact that Donald Trump was elected president, or in the case of Doctor Who, both Trump's presidency and Brexit. They cannot comprehend why a rational person would vote for Trump or want Brexit. In their minds, the only possible reason is racism, sexism, homophobia, fascism, Nazism, and the dreaded patriarchy. They simply will not accept the idea that there are valid reasons to vote for the way people for vote the way that they did that have nothing to do with nefarious purposes. Now, their solution to this supposed problem is to abandon traditional entertainment and storytelling in favor of what they think are teachable moments. They think that by showing us what they believe, it will somehow change our minds. And they are wrong, of course, as Doctor Who's ratings clearly show. Now, if you enjoy Outrage YouTubers, I'd ask you a simple question. Has anything gotten any better? The answer, of course, is a very resounding no. In fact, things have only gotten worse. Much, much worse. Outrage isn't helping, and it never will. In fact, it's counterproductive. The reason for this is that you're dealing with a belief system, and belief systems never change. You might be able to have a friendly conversation with someone who has a totally different belief system than you, but you will never alter their belief system. That is just the way the human psychology works. The best I can get, example I can give of this are Christians. Now, I myself am an, am an atheist, but I, I'm always very quick to point out that I am a Joe Average atheist. I am not like that Drenhole Richard Dawkins who goes around insulting anyone with a religious faith. In fact, I wish he'd shut his pie hole because he's given the rest of us a bad name. But the average atheist is perfectly content to live and let live. As long as your beliefs don't require you to harm anyone, we are fine with it. Whatever helps you get through the day, man. I don't go around trying to convince Christians that they're wrong. Christianity is a belief system, and belief systems will never change. Just look at the Spanish Inquisition. How many non-Christians were tortured and killed rather than change their belief system? Look at Nazi Germany. How many Jews went to the gas chambers rather than alter their belief system? Belief systems never change. That is how psychology works. So the question then becomes, What's the answer? How do we get these woke dren holes to stop ruining our favorite entertainment? The answer is, we don't. Nothing we do will ever change them. The only thing that we can do is to stop watching the crap that they spew out and only support that which we enjoy. 
I know that this is a really hard thing to do. We keep watching in the vain hope that it will somehow get better. But watching only supports these dren holes. It makes them think that they're doing the right thing. The only thing to do is to stop watching. I recently made a very difficult choice. After 53 years of watching Star Trek, I decided that I'd been burned too many times in the last 11 and would no longer watch nor review any Star Trek related material. This was a really difficult choice, as you can see in my video on the subject, Star Trek The Final Fandai Masters Review, and there's a link to that in my description box. But stopping is the only possible solution. After the ratings and box office grosses plummet, they'll either change their ways, again highly unlikely, you never change a belief system, or the franchise will die. The franchise dying isn't a bad thing, not even for Star Trek or Doctor Who. Now I understand that this probably leaves a hole both in your entertainment and your heart, and it's probably emotional. When I left Star Trek, I was both sad and wistful. I wished that it could change to meet my expectations, but after 11 years, it, it was clear that it wasn't going to, and it never would. The last truly good Star Trek was Star Trek Continues. If you want anything to change, you need to cancel your CBS All Access subscription, stop watching Doctor Who, stop going to any future Star Wars movies, stop going to Marvel or DC movies, and stop reading their comics. Just stop. So, you've decided, like me, to give up on your favorite franchise. What do you do next? Well, there are three solutions. First, stop paying attention to the outrage YouTubers. They're only making things worse. Second, to support only those services that have shows that you enjoy. Now, I recently actually signed up to Hulu solely for the purpose of supporting the Orville. I have no other subscriptions to no other services. If I want to watch their crap, I can do it for free. But the third and more important long-term solution is to support independent films and streaming series that are created by people who don't live in the isolated woke bubble of Hollywood of the BBC. People in Hollywood are never going to change. They have a woke belief system and belief systems do not change. People who make movies outside of Hollywood don't have this belief system and don't have the problem. Now at the moment I suggest that you subscribe to the Dust channel on YouTube and there's a link to that in my description box. Dust presents all kinds of science fiction, most of it being very, very good. And their Sunday evening hour-long show is essentially the modern Twilight Zone. And while most of Dust's videos are shorts, you can always ask for more. Consider them pilots for new series and just clamor for more. If you do this with as much passion as you currently invest in outrage YouTubers, I guarantee that they will make more of what you enjoy. So just remember, being outraged doesn't help. Outrage YouTubers are actors. They're preying on your outrage to get money. You cannot change your belief system. It's pointless to even try to change a belief system. Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, all of your favorite franchises, they're already dead. Continuing to watch only encourages the people who make them to keep making more of the same. Instead, support independent filmmakers who produce things that you actually enjoy. And that's all that I have to say about that. I would love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. So a little bit of ad to copy in the <laughs> style, badly, of the immortal Ernie Anderson, one of those guys you always heard doing voiceovers. <clears throat> Sunday on the Fandai Master's review of Batwoman. Batwoman and Luke are on the trail of a villain targeting social media mavens. Then Sophie gets an unexpected visit from her mother and Mary offers her expertise to assist Kate. Now Jacob Kane is approached to make a fa good on a favor while Alice focuses on her plans for retribution. That's next time, Sunday on the Fandai Master's review of Batwoman. So, thank you for watching. 
That is all the time that we have today for this episode of Tales from SYL Ranch, where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.